Earthquakes produce different types of seismic waves that can be identified on seismograms. But did you know that each seismograph station produces three different seismograms for each earthquake? Why is that? Doesn't one tell you how big the earthquake was? Earth's movement is three-dimensional, and one component only reflects one direction of movement. If a station had only one component, you would only know about movement in one direction. Different instruments on the seismograph measure three types of motion, up-down or vertical motion, north-south motion, and east-west motion. Let's take a close-up, exaggerated look at how a house would be affected by each direction of motion. When the house is shaken in the east-west direction, this shows up on the lower component. Nothing is recorded on the north-south or vertical components. When the house shifts north-south, this shows up on the second line. When the house is shaken in an up-down or vertical motion, only the top seismogram records the motion. During an actual earthquake, the house can move in all directions. Why is that? Earthquakes produce different types of waves, like body waves and surface waves, and these waves travel out from an earthquake in all directions. Body waves, like P and S waves, travel a curving path through the Earth. As a result, they arrive at seismic stations from below. P waves are compressive waves that cause temporary microscopic deformation of the Earth in the direction the wave is traveling. Thus, energy is primarily recorded on the vertical component of the seismogram, with less energy recorded horizontally. S waves move more slowly and are more destructive since they advance with a shearing or back and forth motion. Because S waves arrive later than P waves, they're usually seen on a seismogram as a second pulse. S waves cause deformation perpendicular to the direction of wave travel, which is primarily horizontal or back and forth motion, with less energy recorded on the vertical or up and down component. The slower surface waves, such as Love and Rayleigh waves, move in a more complex undulating pattern and thus show up on all three components. In conclusion, it is the combination of signals that gives seismologists information about the magnitude, distance, and type of earthquake that occurred.